How Starbucks Became Successful Greetings everyone, welcome to our channel. Almost every entrepreneur has read the Starbucks coffee success story to learn from it and get inspired. But to be inspired, you need to see the underlying wisdom behind the owner's story that led to the success of that business, rather than the business expansion itself. In this video, we focus on the key subjects and turning points in Howard Schultz's life, which made out Starbucks coffee a successful story. Coming from a poor working class family, Howard D. Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, transformed his life by establishing his company into the world's biggest coffee house company. As Schultz says, If you want to build a great enterprise, you have to have the courage to dream great dreams. If you dream small dreams, you may succeed in building something small. For many people, that is enough. But if you want to achieve widespread impact and lasting value, be bold. Let's get started. Childhood Memories His childhood was spent around poverty. Schultz lived in a neighborhood with low-income families. Schultz witnessed his father struggling for money. At the age of seven, his father injured his leg at work and had no medical insurance, so the financial strain on the family left Howard scarred with terrible memories of his childhood. Howard Schultz explains it as, I saw my father losing his sense of dignity and self-respect. I'm sure that this was caused mostly by the fact that he has been treated as an ordinary working man. In high school, Howard played football that earned him an athletic scholarship for Northern Michigan University. Upon starting college, Schultz realized he did not want to play football and chose to major in communications. To pay for school, he took out student loans, worked as a bartender, and also sold his blood for money a couple of times. After graduation, the future entrepreneur spent three years working as a sales manager at Xerox, then joined Hamamaplast, a Swedish company. The company sold various home appliances that included selling coffee machines to Starbucks. Starbucks caught Howard's attention when it placed an order for a large number of coffee machines. This led him to fly to Seattle to meet the owners, Gerald Baldwin and Gordon Bowker. How did it all start? Starbucks was founded in 1971 by two university friends in Seattle. The founders named their coffee, tea and spice business, Starbucks Coffee, Tea and Spice, in reference to the helmsman in the novel, Moby Dick. By 1981, three more stores had opened in Seattle. At that time, the New Yorker Howard Schultz was aware of the company. He was impressed by the quality of Starbucks coffees and developed the idea of selling premium coffee nationwide. In 1982, Schultz was employed by the company and became head of retail and marketing at Starbucks. A dispute between Schultz and the owners about the further expansion of Starbucks led to a break. Schultz resigned from Starbucks and in 1985, he opened his own coffee bar the third place to hang out. After Howard Schultz bought the company from its founding members in 1987, he focused on making Starbucks the third place. The idea of the third place is one that exists between work and home. It's a space where people want to hang out and relax. There's just something comforting about ordering a nice cup of coffee and being encouraged to sit in the shop with your laptop and work. On top of that, Starbucks also serves as an oasis for meeting up with friends, having a snack, and relaxing in a comfy chair while listening to the latest indie playlists. That's the type of cultivated experience Starbucks provides. It's cool, clean, atmospheric, the baristas are friendly, and the coffees have nice names. It's all about the concept. Starbucks has been responsible for creating the concept of a third place between home and work, where people can relax, enjoy a cup of coffee, and experience the inviting ambiance. It is often said that Starbucks taught America how to drink coffee and is now continuously teaching the world iconic global brand with customer satisfaction. When companies were aggressively advertising, Starbucks decided not to advertise. When cost-cutting was the dominant paradigm of the industry, Starbucks chose to emphasize non-routine procedures to create excitement among the baristas instead of streamlining procedures to minimize cost. Unlike most other companies, Starbucks made its employees its partners by offering them stock options and health insurance. In 2014, it announced that it would pay for its U.S. employees to complete an online bachelor's degree at Arizona State University. Although the pros and cons of this employee benefit and Starbucks motivation behind the offer were widely debated, it again defined the organization's intent to go against the norms. Starbucks' approach towards gathering customer insight is also quite unique and different compared to multi-million dollar marketing research budgets utilized by global organizations. Going against rigorous and complex customer surveys, Starbucks chose casual and informal chats with customers to capture overall mood, understand experience with the store, and gather valuable feedback. It is not that Starbucks does not conduct quantitative market research. 
it has in fact successfully used research findings to shape its market entry strategies in many countries. The key aspect to highlight here is the fact that the organization does not have a rigid, compartmentalized view of understanding customers. These clever and innovative ways of understanding its customers has enabled Starbucks to build an iconic global brand that has resonated with customers across the world for almost 50 years now. The Global Expansion The global expansion of Starbucks has been rapid and strategic. It opened its first international store in Tokyo in 1996, entered the UK in 1998, and opened its first Latin American store in Mexico City in 2002. The footprint of the brand increased to cover Russia in 2007, and it opened its first store in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam in 2013. In February 2014, it entered Brunei, the 15th market in the Asia-Pacific region, and the 64th market globally for the company. In 2015, it opened stores in Panama and reached the milestone of achieving 99% of ethically sourced coffee. The company has more than 30,000 stores in 80 countries worldwide as of June 2019 and is expected to maintain a strong growth momentum. What's next? On the 3rd of April 2017, Starbucks former CEO Howard Schultz passed the leadership baton to Kevin Johnson, who is the president and CEO moving forward. Kevin Johnson served the company in its board of directors since 2009 and has been the COO of Starbucks since 2015. Since Kevin Johnson took over as CEO, the company has successfully executed on its strategic plans, including innovation in coffee, elevated food options, and innovation in premium craft iced teas. Consistent brands act as a beacon amongst the clutter of modern life and a mental shortcut for customers. Social Media Strategy in many ways, Starbucks' social media strategy is an extension of its store's famous calm, inviting, and warm ambiance. The general tone of Starbucks' social media presence has been personable, sleek, interactive, and non-intrusive. The devil is in the details. It's the little things that matter. Attention to detail is a prime characteristic of high-performing organizations, and Starbucks is a perfect example of that. In 2016, Starbucks partnered with Spotify for the music it now pipes through its stores. It's also integrating the streaming music service into its mobile app, letting customers see what's playing and save it for later. The Spotify playlists are carefully curated to help create that ambiance of a local coffee shop. Holly Hinton and David Legree, the in-house music curators, are responsible for what gets played. Their sole work is searching for the right tracks and artists that they can see are fit to be played in the coffee shop. Personalized name. Aside from its strange cup-sized names and seemingly endless menu of frozen drinks, Starbucks is probably best known for its inability to get its customers' names right. We all had to experience it at least once in our lifetime. Starbucks doesn't have to handwrite names. Almost every other fast food chain simply prints a number on your receipt while your order is prepared. Starbucks' seemingly quaint, handwritten order system isn't there because they don't get technology either. Their mobile app is state-of-the-art and is leading the way in cashless payments by smartphone. Why does the chain still bother with writing down names then? The fact that all baristas write your name on the takeaway beverages adds to the personalized, memorable nature of a visit to Starbucks. Calling your name out doesn't just inform you that your drink's ready. It allows a more personalized service, since we love to hear and see our own name, even if it's never spelled correctly. Bottom line, the company sells much more than just coffee. It also sells personalization, comfort, consistency, as well as a welcoming atmosphere and a list of fancy drinks unique to the Starbucks brand. It is for this same reason that Starbucks has managed to remain premium while also becoming ubiquitous. Which is your favorite coffee brand or your hangout spot? What are your thoughts about Starbucks? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon button so that you'll get a notification whenever we post a new video.